If your dentist just told you that you need a root canal, then you need to watch this entire video because what I'm about to tell you may completely change the way you think about dentistry, chronic infection, and your immune system. I'm Dr. Chris, the Detox Dentist, and today I'm going to walk you through the real options you have other than a root canal, how to prevent a root canal, what a root canal really is, and the options most patients are never told about. But let's get something very clear. A root canal does not fix infection. It hides infections. It is a chronic, long-term infection, no matter how good the root canal treatment actually is, and most of them are pretty awful. And that infection inside the root canal, it doesn't stay in your tooth. It travels throughout your bloodstream into the rest of your body, including your heart and your brain. Now, before we decide anything, before you even think about a root canal, you need to decide is the tooth affected or infected. An affected nerve is irritated. It is sensitive. It reacts to cold, to biting, meaning the nerve is still alive. It's irritated, inflamed, stressed, but it's not dead. It may be close, but it's not quite there yet. Alive nerves can almost always be saved. The problem is this, a lot of dentists will do restorative dentistry. They'll do a crown, a cap on the tooth. And when that cap becomes sensitive for various reasons, the easiest answer for them is refer them to the endodontist, which is a root canal specialist. When you go to a root canal specialist for a sensitive tooth, guess what you're gonna get? You're gonna get a root canal, exactly. So it's very important to have a dentist that understands what an affected nerve is versus an infected nerve and has the skill and training to actually treat this affected nerve properly. Now an infected nerve, it's an entirely different story. The tooth is already dead, meaning the bacteria have traveled into the pulp chamber, the live part of the tooth. The tooth now has become a chronic infection source. There is no more nerve, there's no more blood supply, and there's no more lymph supply. That's right, a tooth is an organ and has all those three supplies. So essentially the tooth is dead, the parts that were alive are dead, and those dead parts in your tooth begin to rot. And that's what an infection is. Except that your body cannot get rid of this infection, so it becomes chronic. And chronic infections never stay localized. They travel throughout the entire body. It moves, it spreads, it leaks into the bone, into the lymph, into the bloodstream, and from there, anywhere it really wants to go. This is one of the hidden root causes of chronic inflammation, autoimmune diseases, systemic diseases. We know Alzheimer's is related to P. gingivalis in the mouth. We know that Alzheimer's and heart disease and many other things are closely related to the bacteria in the mouth, not just in the teeth, not just in the gums, the entire mouth. So why are root canals a problem? Meaning when somebody cleans out this root canal, isn't that clean? Isn't the tooth now sterile? Nope, the tooth is not sterile. You cannot sterilize a tooth. A root canal removes the nerve, but it cannot sterilize the tooth, and it only removes the main part of the nerve, not the little side branches. Think of it like a Swiss cheese. There is millions of little canals in a tooth, and they only clean out maybe one to four. Inside every single tooth, there's thousands of microscopic tubules, side canals, accessory branches, places no file, no chemical, and no laser can reach. As a matter of fact, there's maybe about three miles of canals in every single tooth, and you're cleaning out maybe a foot. When the nerve is removed, these spaces remain filled with bacteria, and they love living there because your body can't get to them, they have an incredible supply of nasty dead material, and it's a dead, hollow, brittle tooth, kind of like a tree branch, very, very fragile, and outside the body. The biologic truth is this, a dead tooth sitting inside a living body is a permanent immune burden. It is a dead organ. Your body does not want dead organs inside of it, and it is a portal of entry for bacteria from your mouth into your tooth and into your system. I like to call that a form of leaky gut. Never good. Your poor immune system has to fight that infection every single day, and it slowly gets weaker, more inflamed, and more exhausted. Chronic infection is way worse than an acute large infection because your immune system gets worn down a little bit at a time. This is exactly why we link this bacteria to heart disease, brain inflammation, fatigue, immune dysfunction, Alzheimer's, too many things to mention, all of them bad. So now if a root canal is not the best option, what options do you really have? Let's go through them step by step to make it as simple as possible. If your tooth is infected, 
It's sensitive, it's a little bothersome, but the pain comes and goes based on maybe a cold exposure or something like that. And it's really close to the pulp. We do what's called the biomimetic or biological vital pulp cap or therapy. This means we add a layer of protective material right next to or onto the pulp, the inside of the tooth. So if the tooth is still alive, this is the gold standard. You want to save the tooth at all costs. The technique is very specific and way beyond the scope of this video, but a biologic dentist is very well aware of how to do a biologic pulp cap to relax the tooth and allow it to heal, kind of like a sedative filling. This technique saves tens of thousands of teeth every year that we're told you need a root canal, okay? So you need somebody who understands what a true biologic pulp cap actually is. It may involve some costly equipment like a laser that most dentists do not have. Now, it, it can be very complicated, but this is kind of like the basic outline, okay? We remove the decay, the really bad part, and see how close it gets to the nerve. Hopefully it does not touch the nerve that makes it a little bit more difficult and has a significantly lower success rate. But we leave a very thin protective layer of dentin whenever possible. We sterilize that layer using ozone, ozone gas and ozone water. If you don't have ozone, you're not a biologic dentist. Then we place a bioceramic liner that mimics natural tooth structure. There is a few options, but it is very important to pick the right one. We then rebuild the tooth in small layers of biological adhesive resin and composite resin material filled with ceramic, not plastic. The end result is pretty awesome. The tooth stays alive, blood flow stays intact, your immune system can defend the tooth, and you can avoid the root canal situation entirely. Not good for the endodontist, fantastic for you. Now this is a breakthrough in modern dentistry because we have materials that are biomimetic. They mimic the natural dentin or inside layer of your tooth. And this works fantastically well on most patients. Now if the decay is very deep, almost into the pulp or maybe even into the pulp, we can still save the tooth by using ozone therapy and a biomimetic sealer to protect the nerve while it heals. This allows the pulp to calm down, regenerate and stay vital. No root canal, no dead tooth, no chronic infection. Does it always work? Of course not, but why would you not try? I personally would do just about anything to try to save a tooth before even considering what most people would say is a root canal situation. Now, you do have options after that, which one of them would be a root canal. I don't choose that option, but the patient gets to make the decision. But if we've gotten to that point, that means that everything we've done until then has failed and I don't like to fail. So now that we saved the tooth, you have to decide how to rebuild the tooth and a small filling usually is not the best option. Now you can do a crown, a cap, or what we call an onlay or overlay. Let me explain the difference for you. A crown is the most aggressive dental procedure short of a root canal that we can perform. It requires that we cut all the tooth structure around the tooth away, as well as on top of the tooth. So 360 degrees around and over the top. You're taking away about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half of tooth structure on average, which is all the enamel. That alone often kills the nerve, which of course then leads to, you guessed it, a root canal. Preparing a tooth for a crown is a very delicate procedure. Lots of water, lots of cooling, lots of ozone water to kill the bacteria that are going to be all over that now open tooth. And unfortunately, very frequently, it's done a little bit aggressively, a little bit rough, too much heat, and then of course the tooth becomes sensitive. After the crown is seated, the dentist does a couple adjustments on the crown. That doesn't work. They send you to the root canal specialist and now you get a root canal. Very common story. A biological onlay or overlay is entirely different. With an onlay, we preserve enamel. We only cover the areas that need protection. We avoid nerve trauma at all costs. We avoid the crown, we avoid root canals, we avoid the extraction spiral. Onlays are one of the most conservative and powerful ways to prevent root canals and crowns and to do what is necessary without hurting the tooth more than necessary. I would say the vast majority of restorations that we do in my office are not crowns, they are onlays to save as much tooth structure as possible and allow the tooth to actually still breathe. Now let's assume the tooth is dead and you don't have an option to save it anymore. It's either remove the tooth or do a root canal. Now you get to make that decision. If you decide to go the root canal route, you're leaving the biological world. You're going to the dead organ world and that is a choice you have. But there are many times where the extraction is the safest option. 
And here's why. If the nerve is dead, aka the tooth is dead, and if the infection has spread around the tooth into the bone, meaning you already have a systemic inflammatory condition, then removing the source of chronic infection is of course the smartest move you can make. It's never been a good idea to leave a dead organ in the body. But that being said, an extraction has to be done correctly, or it creates almost a worse situation than leaving a dead tooth. A biologic extraction of the tooth specifically removes infected ligaments, the part around the tooth that connects the tooth to the bone. It cleans the bone out because the walls around the tooth, the bone, are usually infected with dead bone because it's been harboring a dead organ. We use ozone to then clean, disinfect, or almost sterilize the socket, ozone gas and ozone water. And then we use PRF or PRP to regenerate healthy tissue. Now the PRF, PRP is drawn from your own body. We draw about two to four little vials of blood and that is then spun out in a centrifuge to separate out the healing proteins. And we use that part of the blood to speed up healing and regenerate a healthier situation quicker inside that socket that used to house the dead tooth. Ideally, we also replace it with a ceramic implant at the same time or as quick as possible. Never a titanium implant. That's a whole different story in another video. Doing this correctly completely eliminates chronic infection, dramatically reduces inflammation, and eventually eliminates it, and takes a tremendous burden off your immune system, often changing your life dramatically. I have so many stories of patients removing infected teeth from their mouth, only to experience dramatic healing in the rest of their body that they didn't even think was related to their mouth. If you want to avoid a root canal, here's some questions you need to ask your dentist. Number one, do you use ozone? Do you even know what ozone is? Do you practice biological dentistry? What is biological dentistry? Can the nerve be saved? And how do you intend on saving it? Do you like to use onlays instead of crowns and why? And in my opinion, of course, most critically, do you perform biological tooth extractions? If your dentist doesn't have the right answers to these questions, please find a biologic dentist, somebody who's been trained in the biologic aspects, the biomimetic aspects, the organic aspects of dentistry. The art of putting the patient first, not using chemicals, not bowing to organizations. I'm a member of none for that reason and a, a dentist who really just is working for you, looking for the root causes of your disease so they can prevent you ever having to see them in the first place. Often it's time for a second opinion. That's where people like me come in all day long. So root canals are not your only option. When a root canal is recommended, everything dentistry can do for you has failed. Every hygiene visit has failed from childhood till now. Whenever you see a dentist telling you to floss more, brush more, recommend certain products that you probably didn't need, all of that has to fail for you to require a root canal. And if you've been with the same dentist for 30 years and suddenly you need all these root canals, that is a terrible disappointment because that is not a dentist, that is a mill. Root canals are not your only option, they are your last option and they're usually not even the best. Your tooth can often be saved, just like we described, your immune system can stay strong, and chronic infection can be avoided entirely. As a biologic dentist, a biologic surgeon, this is what I do most. I remove infections and I place beautiful ceramic implants all day long, almost every single day. I'm often the second opinion, which then turns into saving the patient from some further poor dentistry. If you find this valuable, please help share this content with people like yourself by liking and sharing this video. It helps people make better decisions when they're told they need a root canal rather than going down the traditional medical route. It is my true passion to help you unlimit your health starting from the mouth.